Creep Aggro ability, by the way this is under the Creep Management subsection of the laning phase. This is what I term as the golden um, window, right? This is the golden window. Every fight that breaks out after you have your item, you should be there. If you're not there, you're gonna make your team lose the fight. High chance you'll lose the game as well. So what we have here is what I call the Dota Phases Step-by-Step -step Process Assessment Sheet for a Carry. So this is a very, very detailed step-by-step -step carry guide that will help you to assess how you're performing in every stage of the game. Yeah, so this entire document is about 18 pages. So uh, you have to bear with me for those of you that really want to get the roll down, get the carry roll down and you want to perform and get to that immortal level. All right, so first we go into laning phase. Okay, laning phase lasts typically around seven to 10 minutes of the uh, game. Okay, so your first 10 minutes is normally when the laning phase is playing out. And what we want to do as a carry is we want to start walking to the tier one tower. We will pull our career to the stairs for efficient career sending. So that'll save you about 3 seconds. Uh, queue all your 8 items to quick buy. So using the control shift and left click so you do not forget about your goal. Uh, cut some trees to make the pulling path easier and also finally uh, block creeps. Note that if you're on Radiant, you don't really want to block the safe lane creeps otherwise they go into your tower. Unless the enemy blocks. On Dire, you start blocking around the tier 1 tower normally. So the creeps don't come into your tower in case you block too early. So if you do not do any of these steps and you die at the bounty rune gang so let's say there's nothing happening and you walk towards the bounty rune and you get ganked uh, then you will get a one okay so if you are doing all of this perfectly then you'll get a five now we move to the next point this is your cs ability so how well are you able to kill creeps right if you are missing most of your last hits you'll get a one if you get most of your last hits or almost every creep you'll get a five Okay, simple enough to understand. So you can always bring up any of your gameplay and try and go through the laning phase, see in every wave, on average, how many creeps do you get. In about 10 minutes, by right, we want about 60 to 70 CS if you're playing a carry. Okay, 60 to 70 CS by 10 minutes. Uh, so if you don't hit that point, you can go through every wave and see where you went wrong. Then moving into the Creep aggro ability, by the way, this is under the creep management subsection of the laning phase. So creep aggro ability, do you aggro at all or do you um, not aggro at all, right? Do you aggro immediately or do you include global aggro as well? Because most of players out there, they aggro every now and then and they forget about it or they don't know what they're aggroing for or they do not use uh, abuse global aggro whenever they see the range creep alive. So some of these pointers you guys can go through. If you want to Ideally, look at a perfect game. You should be hitting the scores of 4 or 5 above for every of these um, pointers. Now we go into wave positioning. Actually, let me change my pan to red because yellow looks a bit hard to see. So we were at creep aggro ability earlier. We were talking about pulling enemy creeps. So how well do you aggro in the lane? Uh, mainly, we are talking about melee to range. Okay, so you aggro the melee to your range and then you global creep aggro. Now the next pointer we go into the wave positioning management. So how well do you hold your lane close to your tower or do you often push the lane up for uh, no particular reason or for the wrong reasons? Okay, so we are talking about where the wave stands in lane. If you are pushing it all the time without consideration to its wave management, you'll get a 1. If you manage it every now and then but you still often push the wave out here and there, you get like a 3. And if you perfectly freeze the lane out outside your tower every time until you know it's time to leave or you know it's time to push uh, to kill the enemy here on this tower, uh, let's say the off laner, right? You are stronger and you push because you are clearly able to kill them, then you get a five. Next, we go into amount of harass received. So when you play the lane, how often do you get hit? Do you get hit for nothing? Do you often get caught in 1v2 when your support is pulling or something? Do you overstep? Do you go out of position? So if you do all of this and you take too much harass, then you get a one. If you take minimal harass, such as when the support is trying to harass you but you're standing away so you don't get zoned out, uh, get harassed for nothing, then you get a five. Okay, next point will be amount of harass given. So this is an important one and a lot of carries tend to get this part wrong 
because they tend to think that the lane is about CS, about last sitting, about uh, getting the nice, preventing the enemy from getting more farm than them. But the truth is, the lane is played a lot of 2v1s, so you have to really abuse these 2v1 scenarios and see openings to trade, especially when you're level 1, 2, 3. Most of the time what happens is a support is playing zoning, this carry is just farming, and these two heroes are killing the support on his team. Okay, this scenario you guys have to fix. If you are this guy, stop considering this, go and trade with the guy. If you something you can reach. So my harass given how well you trade. If you're not harassing at all, you're gonna lose the trade for sure. If your support is playing the lane alone, you're gonna lose the trade for sure. You're gonna lose the lane as well. Yeah. If you harass and you also harass without drawing aggro, so you abuse the uh, aggro cooldown duration and the range, and you always win your trade with like a 2v1 or like a 1v1 but your favorable trade, then you get like a 5. Okay? Moving on to the next point, the 7 point now. So we have amount of regen sent in lane. Amount of regen sent in lane would be whether or not you have a tango of spare, whether or not you're depending on your support to buy but your support doesn't buy for you, right? Uh, are you always stuck with half health in lane? This point coincides with the next point, they are uh, simultaneously related. So how, how often you send regen is how much health and mana you have in lane. The misconception that people have is they often think regen is a waste of gold, waste of net worth. Uh, I don't need to buy regen because it's gonna slow down my item timing, right? But that is far from the truth. So whenever you have no health and mana in lane, high chance it was because you took too much damage for the wrong reasons and then you are actually forced to recover but you do not recover with uh, regen. So when you find yourself often low in health and mana, try and focus on your amount of damage taken in lane instead of focusing on the amount of regen you send in lane. Okay, Because if you take damage all the time, you're forced to send regen. But if you are not sending regen and you still take damage, that's just a way to lose lane immediately. Uh, you have to correct this misconception if you're one of these players that think that regen is a waste of net worth. Right? It's not a waste of net worth if you buy it because you took a good trade you want the trade, now you have to sustain back up uh, to take another favorable trade. So if you don't buy at all, you get 1. If you buy perfect amounts with 1 set spare all the time, you get 5. If you're always low in health and mana, you get 1. If you're always full health and more than 3 quarters mana, then you're uh, good, you get 5. Okay, make sure your tango is running all the time. Make sure your mana remains high, otherwise buy a mango or something. And then this is a big one as well, awareness of gold for buying items. So what happens is uh, many people, especially in the lower tiers, they stack up too much gold because they don't look at their gold, then they don't open the shop. A simple solution to this is just to make sure you queue your items to quick buy, right? And then you will notice the items pop out a lot. So you will buy them instead of saving to like a thousand gold before you buy like a 500 plus 500 item worth gold, worth of uh, gold, okay? So you have to consider as well, see regen and efficiency. Make sure when you send a courier, regen comes, efficiency with other items such as whatever else you need to buy that you can finish your gold with, you should ideally finish it. Okay. And finally, after we go through all of this CSing, all of this aggroing, managing the wave, harassing, avoiding harass, and uh, sustaining trading, buying items, now we are going towards leaving the lane. So this will be leaving the lane. When the laning phase is done, normally the carry is kicked out of the lane. There's gonna be very rare instances where you'll win the lane. Okay, so if you win the lane, or you leave the lane at the right time, you will get a 5, right? So you can see here, dominate lane and break tower. Or leave lane at the perfect time when there's threat. Threat will be normally, see, around level 6, 7 or 8 when the enemy offlaner becomes a big problem to you. If you're 7 to 8, it means you could have stayed longer to win the lane or to break the tower. If you're around level 6 or 5 and you leave, then the lane is really dangerous. So dominance in lane or uh, leave lane before 6, okay? Hey guys, before we continue with this video, I would like to just take a quick moment to ask that you like, comment, share and subscribe to my videos and YouTube channel. Your support will really help me grow my channel. Also, you can check out my Fiverr page if you're interested in coaching sessions with me. Thank you. After the laning phase, now we go into our early game phase. So early game phase will last around normally the 10 to 25 minute mark of the game. Okay, so after the laning phase, how fast you end the early game phase depends on how fast you hit your timings. 
On most heroes, your timing will end when you get that survivability item. Around 20-25 minutes is the sweet spot. So, for BKB heroes like Sven, like Luna, Ursa, uh, Troll Warlord, Phantom Assassin as well, all these heroes, once they get their BKB, is when their early game will end. So they start grouping to team, but we'll go to that later in the mid to late game phase. So for now, we'll focus on the early game phase, where we will go through our selection of farming route. So how well do you select your farming route? Do you select it based on efficiency, based on your ability to flash farm, right? Do you prioritize your waves? Do you know how to decide between jungle camps and ancients? So if you always uh, pick the wrong path, that means when you could have done ancients, you're farming normal camps, or when you should have been pushing waves, you're doing normal camps, then you'll get a one. If you do it, sometimes you go ancients, sometimes you do normal camps, sometimes you do waves, then you get like a two to four. Okay. And then uh, finally, if you're like an ancient hero, you'll do ancient. If you're not an ancient hero, you'll do normal camps. All the while you do waves as well, then you get a five. So perfect farming road. Next, we go to connecting the dots. Okay, connecting the dots, this is a big one. This is something I classify in terms of efficiency. That means all the dots in terms of jungle camps, in terms of uh, ancients, the creeps that are highlighted in your map in gold, you connect the dots to your closest path and you connect them outwards towards a lane. So how well you are able to do this connection will decide how well you uh, score. So if you're able to connect your dots all the time, that means from camp to wave, back to camps, without pausing, so you have to pre-plan your puff, you'll get a 5. If you take a long time and you select the wrong dots or you don't connect dots by going one camp to a fight, fight to a dot, dot to a fight, and you just waste time, then you get like a 1. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If this doesn't make sense, Anytime, just leave a comment below. I do my best to answer to you guys, to help you guys improve in the game, or you can always schedule a session with me uh, by adding me on Discord. Okay, then next point, amount of interruptions present. So interruptions are anything that will slow down your farm. Uh, this is normally like a fight that is meaningless, chasing for kill, harassing a hero that doesn't lead to anything. Whenever you're doing stuff like this, you're wasting time. When you're wasting time, you're interrupting your flow of hitting your timings. So if you're always wasting time, right? Walking around, doing nothing, chasing for kills, taking meaning meaningless fights, then you get a 1. If you always are efficient in your farming route, you're always at the right place at the right time, you join every fight that's good, you avoid every fight that's bad, and you're always maximizing farm, then you will get a 5. So this is a huge one. Okay? Next, we go into time taken to kill creeps. So how fast do you kill your creeps? Do you prioritize Let's say you have a bear free hero, right? Or you are a cleaving hero. You're able to kill multiple creeps, but the damage is like spread out. So do you take extra time to kill the high health creep or do you time it so that all the creeps die together? Do you use your spell when you kill the creeps or do you save your spell when you uh, are farming creeps? So all of this will directly contribute to how much damage output you do, which also contribute to how fast you hit your timings, okay? So if you do not prioritize high health creeps to one-shot everything, if you do not use your spells and items to farm, then you get a 1. If you farm it as effectively and efficiently as possible, you get a 5. So next point is clarities and TPs. Okay, a lot of people are guilty of this. I'm sure most of you are as well. You often find yourself running out of mana. You find yourself always stuck without TP. Um, a good habit is always to hold two or more clarities and two TPs all the time. So your mana is always running and you always have a TP to reach any lanes or fights that break out that are good for you to go to. A uh, simple one, but important one. And then ability to identify open lanes. So when you're still in the farming phase, which is the early game phase, a lot of your farm actually comes from pushing out lanes, right? You have to shove lanes. You cannot just be AFK in jungle, sleep in jungle when there are ways available to you. So a very common mistake that low MMR players tend to do, which will make your teammates struggle as well. Because when you do not push out lanes, the enemies do not have to come and react to you, so they don't have to TP back to you. As a result, your farm is also slow because the waves will give you more farm than jungle camps, with the exception of ancients. Ancients are 1.3 to 1.4 times a wave. Uh, big camps, two of big camps are 1.5 times a wave. So waves will always be more efficient and faster. Okay, and on top of that pressure, if you do not do any open lanes, that means any safe lane, any lanes that are safe and you don't push them out, then that's a, that's a problem, right? Or if you are always sleeping there and clearing out the lanes, uh, always walking towards an open lane instead of spending too much time AFK in jungle, then you'll get a 5. So make sure you guys are always on the lookout for lanes that are open to TP2 so you can farm uh, way faster and you apply pressure at the same time. 
All right, seven point, ability to identify cleanups. So what cleanups mean are, I like to differentiate cleanups and fights. So cleanups are when you go in, people are low health, you come in, everyone just dies really easily, really fast, and you're back to farming, pushing lanes and hitting creeps again, right? A fight will be when you have to spend a lot of time against high health heroes in a fight with your team, that's a fight. So when you're still in the farming route, when you're still in the early game phase, you want to do what's really sure to you, right? You want to show up when it's good, you don't want to show up when it's bad. So you show up when it's good would be a clean up. Heroes need to be low health, hero needs to be dying, okay? For you to TP in to a tower when they dive, to counter dive, counter gank, clean up some kills, or when a fight breaks out really near you and you're just showing up there to pick up some kills. So if you miss out on a lot of these free TP kills or you miss out on a lot of, of these uh, free kills that are nearby you, then you get a 1. If you do it sometimes, you get a 3. If you do it all the time, like you show up, perfect time, perfect spot, every time you get 5. Okay, so choosing your fights early on, differentiating between what's a kill and what's not a kill, what's a waste of time is uh, very important for a carry because you don't want to be wasting time in a fight that takes a ton of time and you could be doing that, uh, using that time to push out ways and, and stuff like that. Now we move to threat identification. Okay, this is in another definition game sense. So you have to understand how every hero interaction work, works in the game, who your threats are, what can and cannot do things to you, what's a problem to you, whenever you do something, what is dangerous to you. So I like to always tell my students to not show if their threats do not show. So in every game, you have to always identify who on the enemy side will pose a problem to you, who is the hero that will stun you, that will slow you, that will disable you, who is a plus one that can kill you or slow your farm down, right? Anytime you do not see heroes like this, you have to farm safe away from threats. So do not show if they do not show. Show if they show. Now if you often find yourself getting caught and dying a lot, you will get a 1 because you do not consider threats. Yeah? But if you identify threats but you still farm towards threats, that means you do not really understand what are your threats. So sometimes you get caught, sometimes you don't. And to get a 5, this will be the perfect scenario where you're never getting caught or close to never getting caught. Maybe you get caught once in a game in the 10 to 20 minute mark, 25 minutes mark. Okay, and you just smoothly farm your way through in a clean and smooth gameplay. Now this is something a lot of people do not do, scanning. So whenever you want to do like a dangerous wave, let's say you want to push into a tower, you want to farm into a high ground, into like dark area, move into dark areas, right? You always want to make sure it's safe. So scanning behind the wave, uh, scanning the tower is big. Because that scan will tell you if you're allowed to take the extra wave, if you're allowed to stay for the extra tower. Instead of assuming, you will be confirming. Okay, so if you do not scan at all, you will get a 1. If you use your scan twice or more than 3 times, then you're gonna get like a 5. All right. Finally, the 10th point, time taken to hit item timing. So, how fast do you hit your timing depends on how well you execute all of this stuff. Okay, so how, well do you, how fast do you farm? How do you select a farming route which will lead to how fast you farm? how fast you kill the creeps, how often you waste time or save time, right? How well do you connect your dots, so fastest farming route around you, shortest distance path. How often you identify open lanes to push and pressure, so waves give you a lot of farm as well. Um, how often do you get kills for free, that also contributes to your farm. Do you ever die when you farm? Uh, are you always safe when you farm? So all of this eventually will lead to this point where you will hit your timing. So timing means on most heroes will be BKB. On some heroes will be survivability items like Sinch and Yasha, Sinch and Kaya, you know, um, Hurricane Pike, Manta. So really it depends on your hero. If you don't know what your hero's timing is, then I would suggest you go uh, and look up some pro games or um, you can always ask below in the comment section or you can reach out to me uh, directly, okay? So we want to try and hit like a pre-20 minutes item timing. That's the fastest route. So let's say I'm Ursa, I want to get my Black Kimbar before 20 minutes. If I'm Sven, I'm Luna, I want to get that timing like Black Kimbar or my Hurricane Pike by 20 minutes. Right, 20, 21. If you're a hero that requires more items, let's say I'm playing an anti-mage. Okay, anti-mage typically requires like a better free a Manta and, an, and a plus one item like Besher or Skadi or something like that before they can actually start joining fights to contribute. So heroes like that might still require around the 22 to 23 minute mark. So this is not really um, set in stone, but a good general formula is you want to be around 20 to 23 minute or like 18 to 23 minute. This is what I term as the golden um, window, right? This is the golden window. 
So if you're able to hit your timings around here, you're good to go. Of course, this is for the more expensive items heroes, like heroes that need more items to come online, like what I said, anti-mage, right? And then this is uh, more like uh, Ursa, Sven, Luna, all this one item and fight type of hero, like BKB. All right, so that's a lot. Uh, I know it's a lot, but um, bear with me, guys. We're almost, uh, we're almost through. Now we go into mid to late game phase. So after you hit your timing, depending on how fast you hit your timing, will start this phase. So if you hit your timing at 20 minutes, you move into this phase. If you hit your timing at like 25 minutes, you move into this phase. So once you hit your timing, decides when you start this phase. Now, we talk about how well you use your timings, how well you use the items you actually get. What direction do you move into when you get the item? Okay, so the subsections are divided into playing off item timings. What do you itemize? What do you choose to buy according to the game? Um, what do you decide to do before fights break out? What do you decide to do in fights when fights break out? And what do you decide to do after fights finish? All right, so firstly, we talk about how well you use your items. So do you really move into the team and play around uh, them, play near them, or do you still like AFK farm yourself? So if you hit your timing but you're still farming alone, that's a no-no. Because you're strong, you have to contribute if you're still farming your AFK farming. Okay, common mistake is a lot of cores carries, they always split push all the time. Even when it's 30 minutes, they're split pushing. Even when it's 40, 50 minutes, they're still split pushing. But in reality, once your team starts grouping up, you need to start grouping up as well. Okay? Every fight that breaks out after you have your item, you should be there. If you're not there, you're gonna make your team lose the fight. High chance you'll lose the game as well. So if you're passively farming, despite hitting timing, you are one. If you are farming near team, with constant shoving near team, with still farming near team, you are five. Okay, now this is quite a hard one to understand, itemization choice. So how well do you adapt, adjust to your game, to the enemies, to your teammates' picks? And drafts. Normally the first few core items are the same, so you get your first two to three items same, but once you go into the third, fourth, fifth item, you need to start deciding how's the game going and whether or not you need survivability, mobility, or damage. Okay? So if you're not if you're just like blindly following a guide, then you'll get a one if the guide is not like the right item built to buy. If you are following uh guides but you're constantly adjusting according to the game, right, with the right reasonings and priorities, then you will get a five. Okay. So two of these are actually very, very big points that you guys need to learn to maximize your uh, effort in. Now we go to map control and team. So like we mentioned before, um, do you move into team or do you still prioritize farming and split pushing? How well you pressure and still go to the team so you balance everything really well. So like, do you make plays with the team or do you play near the team but you don't do anything when you're going to the team? Okay, securing Aegis, big one. Before you attempt to try and like high ground or something, make sure you ping your team to take Aegis. Cause most of the time, people tend to go wrong when they go high ground without Aegis and they just throw the game. So try and make sure that when you see your threat showing on the map, like elsewhere, ping your team to shove waves out to them and then walk into Roshan after. Group up to take Roshan. If you're not taking Roshan at all, when you do a high ground push, and you throw the game, you get a 1. Sometimes you don't need Roshan when the game is really easy when enemies are dead, but if you want to have like safety net, then you always uh, fall back to Roshan. Okay, take Aegis. So you have a second life to go high ground. After that, we talk about how well you use items. So when you go into fights, what do you do in fights? Uh, do you use your items properly? So let's say you buy BKB for BKB heroes. Do you use BKB or do you save it until you're like half health? Do you use it at the right time, correct moments? Do you overstay in fights, right? So if you overstay and you die, that's a problem. That's related to the next point, hard commit and soft commit. So when you have BKB, we pop BKB, we go in and we hard commit. Hard commit would mean to go into the fight with intent to throw everything we can contribute in the fight and uh, get out when our BKB is running out. Then we start soft committing after, which is to just throw spells from afar, wait for cleanups with survivability as priority. So if you're hard committing every time, you die every time, you get one. Um, if you're hard committing and soft committing based on the right scenarios, you survive almost every fight, you get a 5. Once again guys, if you uh, just to reiterate this assessment sheet, you can use it as a cheat sheet that can help you to review your games and then you can see what are the factors you have to work on, where are your downsides to your games, to your pattern play, right? Habits, bad habits, based on the grading criteria. So if you don't use PKB, you get 1. If you die every time, you get 1. If you 
Don't use items, you get one. If you don't uh, aim the right targets, you get one, stuff like that. Okay, now we talk about how well you use your items. So aside from BKB, how about your Bling Daggers, your Manta, your Pike, your Satanic, you know, your Bashers. Do you use your items or do you forget about them? Um, do you use a few items or almost every item but you use it on the wrong for the wrong reasons? That means um, you just open it without... Let's say you have a Manta, the fight breaks out, you use it without thinking about the spells or you Satanic when your health is high. So stuff like that you must be mindful of, okay? For the right reasons, every item available. Eight point target prioritization. So are you always aiming a tank that's wasting time when you're given a chance to kill a core, uh, like a squishy core or like a squishy support? Are you going towards the tank? So if you're doing that, you get a one. If you're doing the right target, you get a five. So heroes that the player can kill, that's what you should be looking for. Usually the backliners, like a sniper hiding or like a oracle, someone that saves, something like that, you wanna be going for, okay? Now the last point of everything, subsection four, after you win a fight, going for the closing of the game. How well do you take advantage of one fights? Do you go aggressive pushing or do you back to your jungle and farm? Do you um, think about threats when you push towers or do you still throw games when you win a fight but threats are still alive? You push out and you still die? Okay, so for this I only have four grading markers because I can't think of anything else to put as a fifth. So when you push towers, you want to make sure you're already ahead with items. You already have Aegis so you don't throw or without Aegis, you still won't throw then that's fine. Okay, so advantage of winning fights without threats alive. So finally, all this will contribute to about 44 points for this mid to late game section. So let me just summarize again for this part, mid to late game. Once we hit our timing around 25 minutes onwards, or if you can get earlier around 20 minutes onwards, you start moving to team, right? You start itemizing. So you itemize properly as the game progresses after your core items. You contribute when you're near the team so you actually balance between wave tower pressure and fights instead of just afk farm despite being near team you uh secure aegis so you take roshan when threats are showing you um use bkb in fights okay so you actually survive your fights you hard commit when your bkb is up you soft commit when your bkb is down you soft commit when your spell that gives you a bkb equivalent effect is down like life stealer you know like uh ref kings out like uh, juggernaut spin all this if it's down you want to run you don't want to stay and fight or you die and then how well you use your items um, what targets you prioritize do you waste time on tanks or do you identify squishes and kill the squishes and finally after you win the fight what do you do and then here will be an additional criteria in terms of GPM XPM last hits KDA so how well you perform in your games from the scoreboard history you can give yourself points here that will add up plus or minus from the total score. Okay, so finally from this you make into 100% and that 100% will give you um, stuff like that. If there's any uh, recommendations, let's say uh, you like get coaching with me or something or you have a friend look at a game for you, then you guys can always discuss recommendations here for areas that you are lacking in severely. Like what gets one, what gets three, what pointers get like five. So you always know what you need to focus more on. Alright, so if you guys are interested, I would highly recommend that you look at this to learn the carry. Especially what is the 1 score and what is the 5 score. Always work towards the 5 score. Avoid the 1 score. If you don't know how to use it, you can always contact me. Alright, so until the next one, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, not enjoyed, but uh, <laughs> I know it's quite boring, but you guys learned a lot from this document. And um, I've linked it down below in the description for you to use to create your own games. Alright, see you guys in the next one.